divided my presentation into the following points. Start with the introduction, secondly, talk about the bad course, then uh, see the case study, and finally, the conclusions and future research. And go with the introduction. Uh, as you know, competencies are as important as knowledge. Uh, competencies are divided into two. Uh, subject specific one related to knowledge in the subject area and generic competencies. Generic competencies are abilities, capacities and knowledge that the student should develop regardless of his or her uh, subject area. But we think that assessing generic skills could put them be a scalable task. Why? Because if we hardly have enough time to make planning, indeed it will be more difficult if we have if the number of activities to value increase. Okay, this is the first key. And our work, the scope of our work is related to LMS, learning management system. We think that we can take advantage of the possibilities that we are provided by the LMS and we can ask the students to do activities, to download notes to study, to participate in forum and so on. And because, because students interaction is file access on assignment done by a student is registered in the system. All this collected information would be used as objective indicators of student proficiency. Indicators automatically obtain statements that determine if the competence level is met. Okay, we are going to extract indicators from the LMS to um, assess um, the right competencies. Well, for this proposal, we have developed a bad course. A bad course is a domain-specific language to customize online learning assessment. And it works in Moodle. And it works in Moodle because this is the element that we have at the University of Paris. Using a bad course, lecturers can easily retrieve indicators for information stored in the real activity logs without any technical knowledge or databases on databases or computer programming because it has a very simple syntax that we are going to see it later. Okay, of course, of course, is a plugin for the Pipse IDP and that processes queries in a domain-specific language. This is the scheme of the course. The user types the query, then the course gets the information that it needs using the library from the Moodle database, and finally we are provided with the results in several files. These are the reserved words and formats. I have divided it into line to explain it better, but we can write it all the line together. And the first line, evidence, followed by the name of the indicator. In the second line, you have to write the ways to get the students. And in the third one, show, followed by the operator that we are going to apply. It can be milestones, participation, access, or interaction. Milestones are activities that have to be delivered before a line. Participation measures the student participation in an activity. Access measures the access of the student in an activity too. And interaction measures the interaction between the student in another activity, for example, in a poll. Then we have to indicate in which activity are we going to apply the previous operator. It can be assignment, forum, campus, or workshop. At the end, you can specify a list of identifiers related to the activity and all the dates between the activity were routed or and so on. The activity happens. Uh, now an example of use. Uh, students have been submitting several tasks during the course and now we want to assess the performance in the context of planning and time management. And we are going to do it from the number of tasks that have been uploaded in time. This is the code, evidence, milestone list get the student show milestone in assignment. And now we are going to get several files with the results. In the first one, we have a list of the quantitative information. The first two columns correspond to user data. Then we have total, that is the number of tasks that they have that they have to deliver. The, uh, in time indicates how many tasks were delivered in time. Overdue indicates how many tasks were delivered out of time. And in progress indicates how many uh, how many tasks have yet to be delivered. Finally, in a time rate, and uh, we have the percentage of in-time work delivered. 
For example, our indicator could be that those with at least 80% of activities and delivered in time are going to have a positive rate in the competence of planning and time management. In this example, only Jane and Walter exceed this percentage. Also, we, are, we get uh, several figures that gives an overview of the results that can support the interpretation of the, light, of the data. For example, the previous data. The previous list. And we have a bar diagram, a pie chart, and a graph. And also, we are provided with a Pentau transformation file. Pentau is an open source business intelligence, and it allows us to perform that operation, uh, to manage the flow of information, or to get uh, another types of, of output files. You don't need to have Pentau installed uh, for a bulk code, but if you want to take advantage of the possibility of, of this file, you need to have Pentau, obviously. And now the case study. The case study we analyzed was developed in the University of Cardiff in a compulsory course on language processor the second of its degree of computer science. 36 students enrolled the course in 2012 and 13 academic year, and the course evaluation was done manually, but we later applied the course, applied the course. The competence we wanted to assess were planning and time management, teamwork, interpersonal skills, and leadership. First, we go with the extraction of indicators from milestone results. Students uh, had to work in small teams, two or three members per team. Every team had to carry out five, five milestones during the course. Every milestone had a deadline, and for each team, only one member, only one, had to apply each activity. Uh, using milestone results, we uh, assessed two competences planning and time management. To have a positive rate in planning and time management, a team should submit all their milestone, in, their milestone in time. And to have a positive rate in teamwork, uh, uh, the five activities should be sub, uh, no, sorry, a team should submit the five activities exactly. Why? Because uh, if you remember, I thought that. Uh, for a team or one member, after that, each activity. So, uh, we thought that if uh, two or three members of the same team uploaded the same activity, the same milestone, they were, they were not well coordinated. So, this was the indicator for teamwork. This table shows the results uh, of each team. Um, the last two columns are the the grades for each team for each competence and uh, I have to say that uh, all the team members share the routine. Okay. Now the extraction of indicators from forum results. As you know, students had to work in small teams and each team in the course had a forum for internal communication. Now, as indicator of interpersonal skills of each student, we calculate the total forum participation. Forum partic participation means all the messages that each student has written. Has written. And as indicator of leadership, we took into account only the amount of debate that each student started. Uh, these are the results. The, the first two columns are uh, user data. The third one, divided started indicates how many debates were stated by each student. Debate participation indicates how many debates, uh, how many responses were given by each student, and total are the sum of, is, is the sum of both. Here we can see a graph, and, uh, a graph of interaction. And I have to say that much of the interaction in the forum is due to responses to lecturers' messages. Uh, all these edges, are uh, responses to the professor. Uh, so I can, I can say that uh, there was almost no activity in, in the forum and in future experience we should encourage the use uh, of the forum. Uh, the grades that the supervisor manually calculated for every student were close to the indicators. 
the best works were also those who performed better on planning and team management and teamwork skills. And although few students participated in the forum, a student with good mark in both indicators really should have the competence. And the interpretation that we did about the indicator was closely related to the results that the lecturer noted during the course. Obviously, further study are needed to get a strong conclusion on the validity of the specific usage of the information retrieved by our course. We have two future lines of work ahead. First, identify other indicators stored in the LMS that can be used to assess another competence or the same competence in another way and span our generative computer language to use in other learning management system. And that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions or comments, I'll be glad to hear them.